even though we now know the solution of x prime equals a times x algebraically, it does not look so nice. We would like to draw the phase space here as well to get some graphical ideas. We will learn how to do this first if a equals d in this video. So suppose we have x prime equals d times x, where d is a 2 by 2 matrix, lambda 1, lambda 2 on the diagonal, already hinting at the eigenvalues of course, uh, where x0 equals x0, some initial condition. Then we know how to find uh, x of t, x of t equals e to the power d t times x0. And if d is diagonal, then e to the power d t looks quite nice, or not so bad, if you like. e to the power d t, just write down the definition, the Taylor expansion, you can write uh, d t to the power n equals d to the power n times t to the power n. And the nice part is that if you have d, a d matrix, d to the power n is very easy to compute. It's just lambda 1 to the power n, lambda 2 to the power n over here. Then combine everything again in one sum here and there. And then we see if we take the sum in the matrix, here the Taylor expansion of e to the power lambda 1 t, and here the Taylor expansion of e to the power lambda 2 t over here. Which means that our system is in fact decoupled. We find x1 of t equals e to the power lambda 1 t times x1 of 0, and x2 of t equals e to the power lambda 2 t, x2 of 0. And in this case we can draw the phase spaces for different cases of lambda 1 and lambda 2. What is mainly important is whether the eigenvalues are positive or negative. If you have positive eigenvalues, then the e to the power lambda t, if t starts to grow, is going to blow up. Same holds for lambda 2. So let's look at positive eigenvalues. Positive lambda 1, positive lambda 2. If we start somewhere on the x1 axis, we stay on the x1 axis because the second term drops out. And since the eigenvalue is positive, the exponent is going to blow up, so we're going out. Same for the x2 axis. If you start on the x2 axis, you stay there and you go out, you blow up. That's the, say, orange-like arrows. And what if you start somewhere in between? Well, you, you have to sketch this. If you are starting somewhere in between over there, then you have to kind of follow the arrows. You're going out, basically, in sort of that direction. Depends, the, the purple arrows depend on which of the two is actually bigger the bigger one of the two. So that's if both eigenvalues are positive. In that case, we get a so-called repeller. We are repelled away from the origin. What happens if both eigenvalues are negative? We have to get the picture over here. If both eigenvalues are negative, what happens, for example, if lambda 1 is smaller than 0? Then this term over here, is decreasing if t starts to become bigger. We get e to the power some negative number here, which means that I'm going inwards. We stay on the x1 axis and we go in. Same if lambda 2 is smaller than 0. If we start on the x2 axis, we are going in. So that explains the red arrows over here. So what happens somewhere over here or there or there if you start somewhere in the plane somewhere else? We have to look again kind of how the arrows look. They are all going in, so the purple arrow, uh, lines are going in like this or like this, so something like that. Well, if you want to make nicer sketches, you have to use a computer algebra system, of course, to do this. You can make much nicer pictures. But this picture already conveys the general idea. Wherever you start, you're going in, which means that the point like this is attracting everything and we have a very original name, of course, we call this an attractor. And, of course, you can combine lambda 1 bigger than 0 and lambda 2 smaller than 0. In the last case, lambda 1 positive, lambda 2 negative. So if we start on the x1 axis, red arrows, we go out, because the lambda is positive. If we start on the x2 axis, 
that the two is negative, we're going in. So we have the, those red arrows over here. So how to combine them? Well, again, follow the arrows. If you start somewhere over here, you have to go up and then to the right, which gives you the purple curve. Such a combination of ingoing and outgoing direction is, is called a saddle point. And that's the last possibility. I hope you have already seen the similarities and one important difference with the discrete dynamical systems. Over here, the boundary between outgoing and ingoing is zero. Bigger than zero going out, smaller than zero going in. Whereas for our discrete systems, this was lambda equals one. This is due to the fact that you have something quite different here. You have e to the power lambda two times t here. And for the discrete systems, you have lambda to the power k. So pay attention if you are looking for ingoing or outgoing, whether you have a discrete system or a continuous system, boundary point between the two is different in both cases.